fans, do you want to win your share of $100,000? Simply enter the houseofboxing.com fight night prediction challenge. Compete with boxing fans around the world. Simply head over to houseofboxing.com and sign up now. This is Jared Parry for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store and William Hill. Delighted to be joined by Adam Azim. Look, it's ahead. We are here for media day ahead of your huge fight, Frank Pettijon. European title, 10th fight. How are you feeling? Yeah, feeling good, feeling normal. Um, ready to go back in that ring and uh, put on a great, uh, great performance and an entertaining night. Did you expect this to come so soon in your career? A European title shot in 10 fights, 21 years old. Do you know what we kind of had this planned out the whole the whole like schedule for the whole year like I want to have two great uh, win the uh, WBA Continental I want it I have a great hard fight Fanyan and hopefully win the European title that's that was my aim so uh, but yeah it's it's come obviously very soon and it's my time to shine so. Absolutely. So your opponent, Frank Petterjohn, he's quite exper- he's got a lot of experience. We've got it here, 33 fights, six losses, only been stopped once. Uh, how do you approach a fighter like that with such experience? Um, to, be, to be honest, like he's a very experienced fighter, um, but I feel like you know, Fan, uh, not Fanyan. <laughs> I keep thinking about the Ukrainian fight. Um, I felt like Fanyan's fight was more harder than this fight um, because Fanyan obviously only lost one out of 25. But I don't look past this one either. Like he's a good, good opponent, but you know, experience. They all said experience, but when I fought Fanyan, he was quite experienced. So, um, but I've had my experience fights. I had two hard fights. This is def- definitely a good way to you know shine. So, with this fight, obviously, just prior to it, there was a few rumours about Harlem Eubank was going to step in with Petterjohn. Um How did it come about? So it ended up with yourself and Boxer getting this fight. But to be honest, it's, I just got a good team around me. So I've got a great team, I've got a great platform, and you know they've done, they've done the, I thank them enough, you know, for getting me, you know, the European title. So, um, but it just, I just got a great team around me. So, so the 140 pound division in the UK is stacked. Like we were talking to uh, trainer Shane, he was saying to us, um, you know, you've got just the people at world level, like your Jack Catrells, etc. But just below that, like as well, like yourself, then you have got Dalton Smith, which. Your name is always mentioned around. I'm sure we're pretty sick of hearing it. You've also got names like Harlem Eubank, Pierce O'Leary, etc. Um, just how good is it to be mentioned around them names? Uh, it's, 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 it's massive. Like, you know, the domestic scene, you've got big names, you know, you've got all these good names. But, you know, they all got, you know, ambitions to become world champions. So that's their mindset right now. So, um, you know, they're all great fighters. But, you know, they're all, they're all going to fight each other one day, you know, down the line somewhere. But my mindset is to become world champions. So, and even them lot. So it doesn't make sense to make none of the fights happen now. You've got to build yourself up to make these fights. So I did mention Dalton Smith there. Um, Frank Smith said there was an offer made to Boxer for you to fight him. Um, can you shed any light on that? Like, obviously, your trainer said, I remember he spoke to Lewis, my colleague, a few weeks ago, and he said it's more of a publicity stunt than anything from Matchroom. Yeah, I think it is definitely a publicity stunt. I didn't know about the offer. No, I don't, none of them knew about the offer. So um, it's just really like, you know, it's a publicity stunt. Um, but obviously, I'm fighting for the European title now. So, like, I've got to do what I've got to do with the European title. So. Absolutely. Well, staying with your division again, uh, O'Hara Davis uh, looks set to challenge the WBA interim title against Ismail Barroso. Uh, he was meant to fight Roley Romero. Roley's apparently injured. And then, obviously, Barroso is the man that people thought was robbed against Romero with that stoppage, which, quite frankly, a lot of people have reacted to since one of the worst they've seen. Um, just your thoughts on that fight for O'Hara? I think O'Hara wins that very comfortably. I think O'Hara stopped him. Uh, I think he will, like, obviously, Roley, I don't think he, that shouldn't be stopped. Roley was struggling with him and he also got dropped from him. So, um, but I feel like Horro Davis will stop, stop him quite comfortably. And uh, he, he, he's a good fighter, but I just believe Horro Davis stops him. Can you see a fight with yourself and O'Hara Davis in the future? It's, uh, he's winning, he's going to win the world title, isn't he? So, like, he's already, that's my goal first to win a world title. So, you know, he's a, also a, a good friend of mine as well. So. In the same division, big fight being announced, December 9th, Devin Haney, Regis Progre. Haney's coming up as undisputed lightweight champion to fight WBC champion in Progre. What's your thoughts on that one? Uh, Haney, 
I, I think he outboxes Regis Progre. I think he beats him quite comfortably. I think Regis Progre and his last performance wasn't that great. I wasn't impressed with it, but I just feel like, you know, he's got good power. He's done, a, he's obviously a two-time world champion, but I just feel like, you know, Haney outpoints him and beats him comfortably. Because this is new weight as well, so I think he's struggling the weight at 135. I want to talk to you now about the gym, McGuigan's gym. It's absolutely flying at the minute. Uh, I spoke to CBS earlier, you know, WBO Cruiserweight champion. You've got Caroline just picked up the IBO title, uh, Caroline Dubois, that is. And then you've also got Ellie Scottney just defended her title. How good is it to be a part of that atmosphere where everyone's just coming back with big wins and big titles? It's great because they're all in the world, world scene, the world stage. And hopefully I'm just, obviously, just below them. <laughs> hopefully win the UBU title and then win the world title like them, so... Uh, it's, it's a thriving gym at the moment, and I feel like I, I feel like you know, Shane should get a train of the year. So you know he's made three world title cha uh, champions. What sort of motivation does that give you, though, when you see like the people coming back now with world titles and all that? Like you come back with the European title, which a lot of people see as the step just before the world title. So how much motivation does it give you, knowing that they're there with the titles that you you want to grasp in your future? Yeah, massively. Like I say, it's a big, massive. Uh, be a big massive glory like to have a world title and for me to look at you know the people at the gym they've won it so uh, you know it's a great it's a great feeling because when they they say the new that is a massive thing because it, it gives me the buzz that if they could do it I can do it so one final message ahead of fight night what can we expect on November the 18th from Adam Azim Adam Azim knockout simple that one and thank you very much Adam for your time